Greeting, friends. I want to speak to you for a few moments about the meaning of heavenly shalom. Hardly a day goes by that I don't receive a prayer request concerning someone struggling with acute depression, anxiety, or panic attacks. Mental and emotional illnesses are becoming epidemic in today's society, and they must be taken seriously. There are many causes for these disorders, and there are many side effects, often resulting in destructive behavior, including deadly substance abuse. So what does the Bible say about mental health issues? Can a book as old as the Bible give relevant advice concerning the mounting crisis of stress-related issues facing our modern world? Well, I believe it can because the Word of God is eternal. The Bible was written for all men of all times. It is the most comprehensive, relevant mental health book ever penned. It is man's roadmap to peace. Without peace, even the most successful, talented, and wealthy among us live in abject misery and spiritual poverty. Heavenly peace is a treasure beyond human comprehension, yet it is readily available to all who seek this divine gift. Listen to the words of the following scripture, John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. We see a reversal of word order in the Greek translation with the subject preceding the verb, just as in English. The normal word order in both Greek and Hebrew, however, is verb, subject, direct object. Deviation from the normal syntax is a literary device used to denote emphasis. In other words, Yeshua is endeavoring to make a very important point. Also note the repetition in the passage, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Both the word order and repetition were used to get his listeners' attention. Yeshua longed for his disciples to receive his gift of peace, his heavenly shalom. I suggest you underline this passage and write emphatic in the margin to help you remember the next time you read it. Now let's see what we can learn from the next passage, John 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken to you so that in me, imoi in the Greek, that's the emphatic form of the personal pronoun, so that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take courage, I have overcome the world. Yeshua was emphasizing that he, is, he alone is the source of true and lasting peace. It's most likely that he pointed to himself when saying the term imoi. The word for tribulation in the Greek is slipsis, meaning oppressing or pressing together, pressure, oppression, affliction, distress, or dire straits. Tribulation is inevitable in this world, but Yeshua has a remedy for what ails us, his perfect peace. Remember the promise given in Romans 8.28, we can be assured of peace according to this passage in Romans 8.28, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. The phrase, peace be with you, was a common greeting in ancient Israel, a typical way of saying hello or goodbye, similar to Hawaii's friendly aloha. Although Yeshua's words in these passages were recorded in Greek, his meaning was Hebraic in thought. The Greek term for peace is Irene, the root of the English name Irene. Irene speaks of a harmonious relationship between men and nations, freedom from molestation, and the absence of war. While this is a beautiful, powerful concept, the Hebrew term for peace is even more encompassing. That term is shalom, signifying not only peace, but well-being, good health, 
welfare, security, prosperity, and rest for an individual, his spouse, his children, his extended family, even his business, crops, herds, and everything else one can imagine. Shalom invokes the wholeness of body, mind, soul, and spirit, and the complete absence of agitation and stress. Shalom is a foretaste of heaven. When a Jew blesses a fellow Jew with shalom, he has been blessed indeed. The term Sar Shalom, meaning Prince of Peace, is one of the descriptive names the Bible uses to indicate the ministry and character of the Messiah. Isaiah 9 verse 6 reads, For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace, which is Sar Shalom in Hebrew. May you also be blessed with heavenly shalom.